In Egypt, the Arab world, and across Africa, everyone knows what the number 22 means, or more precisely, who it refers to. Egypt's greatest ever footballer. Not Mohamed Salah, but Mohamed Abu Trika. Known as the magician in Egypt, Abu Trika never played outside the Arab world, but today he's in exile and considered an enemy of the state by his own country. Abu Trika won everything with Al Ahly, wearing the now iconic number 22 shirt. Seven Egyptian league titles and five African Champions League titles, as well as two African Cup of Nations for the Egyptian national team, becoming a national hero in the process. But he was a hero across the Arab world and Africa too, for his religious piety, humanitarian work, support for the Palestinian cause, and for the young revolutionaries who toppled President Hosni Mubarak during the 2011 Egyptian revolution. Even Mohamed Salah idolised Abu Trika. The two played together during 2014 World Cup qualification, Salah at the start of his career, Abu Trika at the end. When Salah joined Twitter, his handle was MoSalah22. But today it's dangerous in Egypt just to sing his name or his number. When Egypt played South Africa in the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, a group of fans started singing Abu Trika's name in the 22nd minute. They were dragged away by plainclothes policemen. Mohamed Abu Trika was born into a working class family in Giza and went to the University of Cairo to study philosophy. His talent was spotted early. He signed for his neighborhood club, Tasana, where he played while finishing his studies. And he began to develop his reputation as a goal scoring midfielder with an eye for a pass. He was also a devout Muslim who prayed five times a day. When he scored, he would celebrate by falling to his knees and pressing his forehead to the pitch, a sign of submission to God. Controversy followed later in his career. As a pundit on BN Sport in 2021, he criticised the Premier League's Rainbow Laces campaign, calling homosexuality a dangerous ideology. He also took a stand in solidarity with his teammates. When he was offered a contract to keep him at the club that was vastly larger than the other players, he turned it down and refused to sign it until everyone was paid the same. But eventually his talent demanded a bigger stage. And in 2003, he signed for Africa and Egypt's biggest club, Al Ahly, where he became an immediate hero, scoring 13 goals in his first 11 games. And there are too many iconic moments to list over the next decade. He also won two Africa Cup of Nations with Egypt, and it was during the 2008 tournament that he gained international prominence for scoring a goal against Sudan and taking off his shirt to reveal a message, sympathize with Gaza. Thousands of Palestinians had just broken the Israeli and Egyptian blockade on Gaza. Abu Trika was booked and warned by CAF not to use political symbols again, but he was now a hero in the Arab world and across Africa. One footballing honour eluded him though, playing in a World Cup. Despite having the best team in Africa for almost a decade, the Pharaohs' last finals were in 1990. In 2011, former US coach Bob Bradley took over and qualification seemed highly likely. But then revolution broke out and longtime dictator Hosni Mubarak was toppled. The ultras of Al Ahly, the Aflawe, played a key role in the uprising and Abu Trika supported them, as well as the new electoral power in the country. The Muslim Brotherhood-backed candidate Mohamed Morsi won and as a devout Muslim, Abu Trika did too. But the Brotherhood had been outlawed by Mubarak and the Islamist movement was seen as an existential threat elsewhere in the region, especially by the autocratic monarchies in the Gulf, with the exception of Qatar. So the counter-revolution began. On February the 1st, 2012, 72 Al Ahly fans were killed in Port Said after a match. Their deaths were widely seen as payback from the deep state for their role in the revolution. Abu Trika held an injured fan in his arms in the dressing room. The fan told him that he'd always wanted to meet him as he died. The league was cancelled and Abu Trika, deeply affected, announced his retirement. But not all football was cancelled. There was still the 2012 African Champions League to play for and the ultras urged the club to win it for the martyrs of Port Said. Abu Trika agreed and returned. The team's progress survived security concerns in Cairo and even a coup in Mali that left them trapped in their hotel for a week. They escaped and returned home for the second leg, during which Abu Trika came on a half-time and scored a hat-trick. Domestic football in Egypt was still banned, blockaded by Al Ahly ultras who demanded that justice be served for those who died at Port Said. 
When the Egyptian FA arranged the traditional Super Cup season opener, the Aflawe threatened to blockade the game and Abu Trika supported them, refusing to play. His club suspended him for two months and he returned just in time for the 2012 Champions League final, in which Al Ahly beat Esperance Sportive de Tunis over two legs. Afterwards, Abu Trika briefly moved to Banias in the UAE, his only foray outside of Egyptian club football. But there was to be no World Cup appearance. His final chance came in 2013 during a final playoff against Ghana. Egypt were beaten 6-1 in the first leg, and while they'd win the second 2-1, it was nowhere near enough. But by then, Egypt was falling apart. President Mohamed Morsi had been removed by a military coup that was backed by the UAE, Saudi Arabia and ultimately the US a few months earlier. And as many as 1,000 supporters protesting the new military government of Abdel Fattah el-Sisi were massacred in Rabah Square. Abu Trika found himself on the wrong side of the government. The Muslim Brotherhood was outlawed, as were football ultras, with both considered terrorist entities. Abu Trika was accused of co-owning a travel business with a Brotherhood member and helping to co-fund the movement, something he denied. In 2017, the government placed him on a terrorist watch list and many of his assets were seized. He fled to Qatar as an enemy of the state and he's been on the terrorist list ever since. But despite this, he remains an incredibly popular figure, albeit quietly, in Egypt and across Africa. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.